Hi, I'm Jim Harold, and welcome to Campfire Deep Dive. We're going to talk about a terrifying Ouija experience. This is the Deep Dive. I am Jim Harold. So glad to be with you. And what we do on this program is we interview classic callers from our Jim Harold Campfire podcast. They share, reshare their spooky stories in greater depth. And then we open up the floor to you for questions. And we've got a great guest. We have a story going back all the way, all the way to the very beginning of the show, 2009. Leanne is on the line and she's going to talk to us about her Ouija board experience that happened to her when she was very, very young. And we're so glad to have her on the show. Leanne, thanks for being back uh, around the campfire uh, a few years later. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It was great to hear from you again. Yeah. uh, Well, the thing was, is when I do these, I send out emails to people who have been on the past. And I found your email because I never delete anything. And I sent uh, it out and I'm like, that's 2009. There's no way she still has that email address. You have that email address. I do. I don't delete. I don't delete anything. (laughs) That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you for joining us today. And what are you doing these days? Uh, You're in uh, Nevada, I think you said now. I think your story happened in Utah. What what does life uh, hold? What do you do these days? Um, I teach for a college here and I also work in a mental health clinic in Nevada. So very cool. Very cool indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's get to it. Uh, Tell us about the story, how old you are, were set it up and and tell us what happened. Because I remember this is one that we featured in one of our campfire books. It's an absolute classic and I love it. So tell us the story. Okay. So I was about 14 or 15 and I I went to my friend's house after school and we were trying to figure out something to do. So she suggested pulling out her Ouija board and we set it up on the floor and she turned out all the lights and put a lava lamp right next to it to enhance the experience or the spookiness. So she starts asking it questions like, is anybody there? And it seemed to be responding And then she started asking for a sign, which is a question I hate, but (laughs) she she did it and nothing was really happening that we noticed as far as the sign. So she just continued asking questions. And I noticed out of the corner of my eye that the lava lamp um, seemed to be doing something weird. All of the wax bubbles in the lamp were combining into one big ball. So the lava lamp, the lava lamp, if people remember, they were those lamps. I mean, I have my jellyfish lamp back here that is yeah. uh, basically fake jellyfish. But but these lava lamps, they were very popular and they had kind of a resurgence around the time you're talking about. And they're little globs of wax that come up. Uh, yeah. And I just wanted to put that out there in case people didn't remember what they were. But uh, yeah, I always loved them. I love stuff, kitschy stuff like that. There's evidence yeah. by, by, behind me. But go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> So the little wax balls were all moving together to form this one ball in the center of the lamp. And I just continued to watch it. And um, I got my friend's attention as well saying, Bridget, look at the lamp. And we start watching it and it starts to form a shape. And it began to make the shape of a head and it was the devil's head. It had horns, it had very thick brows that were very angry and scowling. Uh, It had a long kind of square face and a broad jaw. And it also had fangs and its mouth was kind of like opening, like it was growling at us. Um, And the whole time, the ball never moved within the water like you would think it would. It just stayed stationary in the center. And once uh, all the details of this wax face, once we recognized what it was, I yelled, oh, my God, it's the devil. And we both took our hands off the board and it just went back to wax bubbles as soon as we did that. (laughs) And we ended it right then and there. And I think I went home. Oh, my. So, uh, 
so the the fact that when you took your hands off, it just dissipated. Now, some people would say, well, maybe this was just a, uh, you know, it would kind of look like and reminded you of a, a devil's head. But if I recall correctly from what you said, there was no mistaking what this was. This was very detailed and very distinct. Is that correct? It, yes, there was no mistaking. It had very distinct details of the eyes. I remember the eyes and the fangs and I could see all the teeth and it was very, very detailed. So it wasn't like a blur or shadow or something that could be mistaken because we were in the dark with just this lamp on. But And the fact that it didn't move at all and the mouth kind of opened like a growl was, there was no mistaking. Now, here's a question. Did you ever play with a Ouija board again? Yes, I played one more time after that with another friend and I left. I made sure we left all the windows open and all the lights on, thinking maybe the dark had something to do with it. And she asked for a sign as well. Oh, boy. And <laughs> I don't know if she was messing with me, but the sign was that it was going to throw the bed on me. It said that it would do that. So I just quit playing and I'm like, this isn't funny anymore. Yeah. But yeah, she was creepy. probably messing with me. But yeah. Now, had that been the first time you'd ever messed with a Ouija board when the devil's head thing happened? Or was it um, was it something that happened? Uh, I mean, was this your first time that you played with a Ouija board? No, I had been playing with Ouija boards with my friends since I was like nine and all the time. And this was the first time with this girl at her house. And her house definitely gave me a creepy vibe after that. So now, yeah. The, the, so the house seemed like it was, do you think that maybe that dark energy was still in the house? Yeah, I think something was going on in her house. I know she had kind of a, a, a rough family childhood. And mm -hmm. I think there was just negativity surrounding I mean, we were teenagers and, but I'm not sure the thing was negative is I feel like maybe it was playing a joke on us. Like oh. something was there. So and it wasn't actually the devil, but it was something like a trickster saying, ah, oh, you want to see something? I'll show you something. Yeah. Like something trying to scare us and it worked because it went away as soon as we took our hands off and and made it aware that we weren't into that anymore. And I never felt threatened after that or anything, but so well, that's, that's the story. Ahead. Well, I, I think what we'll do is we'll open it up to some questions. Now, folks, remember this has been a long time ago, so Leanne may not recall <laughs> every single detail, but if you want to open it up with your questions and just some general thoughts on Ouija boards and uh, I mean, my thing is, is that I'm not, in fact, we're going to be having a live stream with Karen Dahlman, who is a big proponent of Ouija boards. And she works with Ouija boards and says that they're a tool if properly used. So I'm not anti Ouija board per se, uh, but the, the way I feel about it, Leanne, is um, I compare it, I've said this on the show many times, to a chainsaw. Like a chainsaw is a great thing. I mean, a chainsaw can do great things. You see these people who take a chainsaw and make uh, beautiful sculptures out of wood or, or ice, or obviously, you know, for utilitarian uses. You put a chainsaw in my hand and I'm just as likely to cut my arm off as I, <laughs> I am anything else. So I, I guess it's the, the way it's used. So folks, if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any thoughts, please do put them in the chat because Leanne's been so kind to spend some time with us today and talk uh, about that. Now, Bobby says, I'm way too afraid to even be in the same room with them. Now, we do have one. Uh, do you have a Ouija board uh, now, uh, Leanne? No, I don't think I've ever <laughs> had one. Because I've always had this fear of having them in my home. And I knew my parents would probably kill me, too. They were very um, against Ouija boards. Mikey is in that camp. Uh, Mikey says, I'm just playing. But seriously, I do not wish the ill effects of what happens with playing with that thing to anyone. Uh, Holly says, I'm way too sensitive to have one of those near to me. Um, 
Jennifer says, why does it seem to open a portal to some and not others? We had one when I was a kid and nothing ever happened. I mean, I don't know how you feel, uh, Leanne, but my feeling is um, that it's one of those things where different people are sensitive to different levels. Yeah, I agree. And I don't know. I had been playing with them my whole life, you know, as a child, and nothing really ever happened until that one time to the point it took us a long time to believe something was happening. We want to take a quick moment to recognize Sylvia, who gave us a super sticker. You are super duper. Thanks for the super <laughs> chat. Chat, chat, chat. So thank you, Sylvia. We appreciate that. We've got all kinds of new buttons here, Leanne, that we're playing around <laughs> with. Uh, so thank you, Sylvia. Appreciate you all was so supportive of us. I appreciate it. Uh, Mikey says it's all about intention. If you intentionally uh, conjure, it's much more difficult to get rid of something with all good intentions. But I don't think they were conjuring per se. I mean, I'm not saying you're suggesting that, but I don't think, I think they were two teenage girls playing with a Ouija board. I don't think you were actually what I would call conjuring personally. No. Um, and I always hated the sign question. Give me a sign because I felt it was inviting them into your space now, to mess with them. LS has a good question. Uh, did your friend ever mention any other paranormal experiences in that house? No, she didn't, but they moved out shortly after and then we lost touch. Um, but she didn't mention any other. The first time I told the story, I found her on Facebook and asked her if she remembered it. And she just, it's like, absolutely. I remember it, but I don't think anything <laughs> else happened. <laughs> I want to take a second and say hello to Kara, only because, and I don't know if it's Kara or Kara, but she says, if I get a shout out, it'll make my year. So there you go. Your year is made, I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Let's see. Uh, Sylvia says, I've always been afraid to use one. I uh, do tarot, but I'm not comfortable with Ouija. Interesting distinction there. Uh, I do tarot as well. Oh, interesting. Inter so yeah. it's not in any way. I mean, I, I won't be offended. Do you still listen to Campfire occasionally? Uh huh. Yeah. So, so it hasn't turned you off of the paranormal. You're still interested in the paranormal, right? No, if anything, it piqued my interest because, uh, like I said, I didn't feel threatened by it. Um, it scared me and spooked me, but I didn't really feel threatened. And it just piqued my interest. And I started to try to learn as much as I can. About the paranormal from there out, which is how I found your show. <laughs> so this this actually indirectly led you to the show and led you to here today, of yeah. course. So that, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, 79 says, I'm from Utah and it seems lots of kids tried them in the 80s. It might be because of the strong religious influence here. We were curious. I do think there is a correlation between people who are religious and an interest in the supernatural because to me, religion is supernatural. If you believe in a religion like Christianity, like in my case, you believe in the supernatural. I do laugh sometimes people who will say, you know, they go to church every Sunday. Nothing wrong with that. That's great. Uh, but uh, they'll say, well, I don't believe in that supernatural stuff. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I think you do. I just don't think you you realize it. Uh, Bobby says, weren't they sold at random toy stores back in the day? Sure. And they still are. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Like I said, I think I mentioned we have a 70s era one uh, from uh, my wife. And it's uh, it's down in the basement. But uh, I think I played with it once way before I was podcasting. Once I started podcasting and hearing all the stories, I got a little afraid. Uh, Lipsha said uh, Ouija boards were commonly used by kids back in the day, y'all, and probably still are. And she, too, owns a 70s era Parker Brothers. Uh, Michelle said she played with friends, but very subtle things, only very subtle things happen. Let's see. Uh, Okay. Tried it once, and years ago, what started off in a good tone suddenly turned terribly evil and satanic. We quit immediately, and the girl who owned it threw it out. I'll never touch one again. You know, we had some very spooky stories, very spooky stories on the campfire about uh, one was there was uh, a Ouija board that the planchette was moving by itself, was what the person claimed. They 
uh, tried to destroy it and it like kept reappearing. Then we had another story from a gentleman, I think from Gabriel from Texas, because that was also one that was in a book, one of our campfire books, which you can find on Amazon, by the way, Jim Harold's Campfire. We have five of them and working on a six. But this was one where a gentleman said that there was a you know, the fold across the middle of the board, it was walking across the floor and they tried to burn the planchette and it wouldn't burn and all this, all this stuff. It was, is quite a, quite a story. Uh, okay. Now this is what Mikey says. This is Mikey's opinion. Ouija board is a tool to conjure uh, opening doors, which evil loves to walk through. The bottom line is you're practicing witchcraft. If you're conjuring, that's Mikey's belief. Let's see. Uh, I'm just double checking. Okay. This is an interesting thought, a trickster element. Uh, to me, Marcia says they're just like going to chat rooms. Sure, they may say they're a teenager, but in reality, it's a 56 year old man. Uh, dear departed Aunt Gertrude may be something much darker. So there could be a trickster element. I, I shouldn't have. Um, all right. Shazzy says, have you ever had other paranormal experiences that you'd like to share, Leanne, not related to Ouija? Um, yeah, there was some time where I was doing some ghost hunting and we went to this place in Utah called Mountain Meadow. And it's Mountain Meadow Massacre site. There was a mm -hmm. huge massacre of 100 some people there. And me and my friends went there on the anniversary, the ancestors kicked us out. So we pulled off on the side of the road and tried to have a interaction, like the ghosts calling on the ghosts to come talk to us from across the street. Mm -hmm. And one of the girls there did get attacked and she got pinned down and oh my, she was locked in the car. And I don't know why it focused on her, but it was, it was scary at the time well uh, that would be frightening my goodness oh my oh my that's uh, that is frightening uh bobby wants to know you said your friend didn't see the head sh shape it made so it she did not or she did see the head shape in the store no she she did she did see it okay okay yeah she yeah. wasn't looking what was what was i mean what was her reaction was it the same as yours yes because I do remember us both once we've noticed and realized what it was just raising our hands at the same time, freaked out. She folded it up and put it away really quick and we <laughs> ran out of the room. So did you guys tell your, you didn't tell your parents because they would have been very upset. You said, right. I didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Cause <laughs> my parents would have been very upset that I was playing with it. Ernesto says, I love Jim's Campfire Podcast. Thank you, Ernesto. I appreciate it. Uh, okay. Uh, Phil says, I definitely have something in my house now, so I'm not playing with one. Uh, so some kind of supernatural uh, thing. Uh, Kara said, OMG. Thanks, Jim. Our pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, KMM 64 says a big shout out from the UK within three miles of spooky Rendlesham forest, Suffolk. And if you're watching this live, stay tuned, uh, or actually you'll have to leave this stream, but at, uh, f what is it? 4 45 PM, 4 45 PM. We will be interviewing Ben Hansen of UFO witness. So, uh, stay tuned for that and just come to my, back to my channel, youtube.com slash Jim Harold two count them two big live streams today. Uh, let's see here. Mischief K says I get more activity from doing my own tarot card readings. Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. Phil said, a ghost in his house. Three days after Jim interviewed me, the bedside light switched on itself. It's an older click switch lamp. There you go. Got to watch out for that, Jim. <laughs> watch out, Leanne. You don't know what's going to happen in the next few days. Uh, let's see here. Ooh. Ernesto says, when I went to Mexico, me and my cousins were playing the Ouija board and a ghost police officer appeared. Ooh. 
Ernesto, uh, put in the chat like that it appears like a physical apparition. Please let us know. He didn't touch the floor and quickly disappeared. Wow. Wow. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, Aaron says, no Ouija boards here. Uh, let's see. Sarah says, a Ouija board told me that I'll live till 83. Well, heck, I hope that it's 103, Sarah. But uh, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, Mikey believes that uh, these spirits attach to weaker, more timid type people. Uh, huh. Michelle says, you know, the other night I had a dead flashlight go on in the middle of the night. The light woke me up. It was in a plastic bag. It had been dead six months. Um, okay. Shazzy wants to know, were you afraid at the time after the Ouija incident that something would follow you home? Or did you feel that once you ended the session, it would be all over? She says, laughing out loud, she would have been scared. I know I would have. Uh, yeah, I was afraid. Um that it would follow me home and tried to get it out of my head as much as I could and kind of hoped it would stay at her house. But yes, I now, definitely was. Now, does anybody else have any other questions for Leanne? We've got her here, you know, when we have a storyteller and we can ask questions. I mean, it is a brief story, but uh, it's an interesting story. And to me, it's one of the most striking examples of like something actually, um, actually just appearing like, not like uh, one of these things, well, it kind of spelled out the name of my dead cousin. I mean, this is dramatic, folks. I feel this is one of our most dramatic stories in terms of the Ouija. Lipsha says that this entity turned to their contemporaries and said, hey, y'all, watch me spook these kids for life. <laughs> That's kind of what I've thought, yeah, especially yeah. as I grew up. Marcia says, I wonder if maybe it was an entity that tried to scare her away from doing this, perhaps to stop something evil from coming through. Interesting thought, Marcia. Interesting thought. Maybe it was kind of saying, hey, don't mess with us. Yeah, maybe that worked. kind of thing. Do you, Leanne, do you have any final thoughts on the experience? Um, it's one that I think I will never forget. And it's also one that I would love to tell about because it just fascinates me still that it happened. What reaction do you get from people when you tell them the story? Or uh, do you tell it Do you tell it to a lot of people? Or are you shy about Should, it? No, I'm not shy about it. Um, usually I get the same type of comments about, I would never play with Ouija boards. That's why I avoid them. I would never let one in my house. The funny thing is, is everybody says they'll never play, play with them, but they sell millions of them. <laughs> yeah, somebody's got to be playing. <laughs> somebody's fibbing, I think. Uh, now, uh, Shelly wants to know, does Leanne wonder what else it may have done if she hadn't noticed the lava lamp? Wow, I've never thought that, but oh, it could have made a whole body or something. I don't know. Or done something else to get our attention because that was pretty subtle and yeah, I, we didn't notice it right away. Michael, who was our storyteller from last week, fantastic story about the mirror. And in fact, uh, since Michael's here, I will pop up a card here somewhere saying to watch that one because that's a great story about a haunted mirror. Uh, he says such a great story. So high praise from, uh, from a great storyteller in his own right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Aaron says, thank you so much, Leanne. Uh, let's see. Aaron said, we will never play with them, but we did. <laughs> yes. Oh, Keen said, I'll never play with Ouija till I get bored. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, well, folks, thank you so much for joining us today. And Leanne, if you'll stay on the line and we'll do a little debrief at the end, and I appreciate it. Uh, so stay on the line and we'll be back with you in a moment. And thank you for tuning into this edition of the Campfire Deep Dive. We'll be doing one. We're trying to do one weekly when we can find the storytellers. So stay tuned next week. And then also make sure that if you are a fan of these videos, don't forget to subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Jim Harold. But I guess you're here because you're watching. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We appreciate it. Stay safe. And as we always say, stay spooky.
Thanks.